Hello guys, welcome back to the Teesside Takeover. My name is Nathan, aka Purple Viking. This is episode two of the series, so if you did miss episode one, please go watch that first uh, before you jump too far into the series and miss anything. Uh, so about this episode, guys, it's going to be covering everything that happened in season two of the Stockton Journey. Uh, we're going to cover tactics, which is something I didn't cover very well in episode one. Uh, I had a few comments uh, in the Discord all saying not, nothing about tactics. Um, so we're going to do tactics, we're going to do transfers, matches, obviously overall season, how we did, uh, and go from there. I do stream this uh, stream this series live on Twitch. Uh, I streamed on a Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, Sunday, usually from half three till half seven. If you do want to watch anything live, obviously YouTube is a little bit behind the series. <clears throat> Excuse me. So if you do want to watch any of that, head over to my Twitch. Uh, links also in the description. So yeah, let's get into the episode, guys. So guys, to kick things off, this is the best 11 of the second season. Um, this is the formation we played for roughly half of the um, half of the season. We did, however, change. As you can see by some of the game time for Jonathan Franks, it kind of gives it away what happened a little bit. Uh, but this is the best 11. Jonathan Franks, again, had the best overall average rating across the team. Uh, he obviously only played 19, which means we did sell him. Uh, we'll hop into that in the transfer section of the video, though. Uh, so 7.58 was the highest. He played 19 games, eight goals from the right wing, uh, which was an amazing, amazing um, return. Um, but in terms of the overall performance of the team, um, again, my strikers had a cracking season. Uh, we brought this guy in, Javel. He's actually called Javel Clark, but we uh, in Twitch we renamed him for your use channel points. So usually he's called Javel Clark. He was recommended by chat as well, which is a, a cracking signing. Uh, and Jamie Owens, again, having a great season. Uh, between them both, 47 goals in 82 games, which isn't too bad. Uh, and Javel Banks actually had the second highest rating uh, in the team, just just behind um, Jonathan Franks. Um, so that was the best 11 of this season. Um, in terms of tactics, guys, this was the formation that we started the season off. Uh, playing uh, was the 4-2-2-2 or 4-2-4 however you like to call it um, but the thing that changed the season massively um, was definitely this change in tactic uh, you'll see from when I go into the kind of the matches of the season um, how much of an impact this did make it was ginormous um, but I'll show you what the tactic was when we changed the formation so this is the tactic that we changed to guys we changed to a 4-1-3-2 um, basically within this formation what we do I'll show you actually the kind of how it looks on the tactic side of things uh, we essentially focus the ball down the middle so we basically want to get the ball into these guys these guys are our driving force um, the two Mazalas especially what happens is these guys kind of get up to here um, and then we instruct our fullbacks to kind of push up and once this is pushed up this it leaves the Mazala either space to get a long shot off uh, if the kind of the fullback passes it back or it means the fullback has the opportunity to whip the ball in and a lot of the time I'd say probably 80% of my goals come from either that cross to my striker or it coming back to the Mazala and getting a long shot off um, and, and that is literally how majority of the goals come we do get a score a lot of um, with this guy as well the attacking playmaker this guy obviously with only being on support with these guys pushed up, he kind of sits somewhere around here uh, and kind of sprays the ball left and right. But often, he can also get a long shot in as well. Um, so it leaves a lot of space. These guys, with doubling up, gives this guy so much freedom, uh, especially with this guy just sat back, kind of holding the uh, defensive line with my two defenders. Uh, on the flip side of things, um, when we're out of possession, these are kind of what we're, I'm instructing the team to do. Uh, so I want my midfield to really press the ball. Uh, it's I've got it on higher. I don't want to put it crazy high and leave a gap. Uh, but I do have it higher and more urgent in terms of pressing. Um, I could go crazy and go super urgent. Um, but obviously if, they, if the players I'm playing against are playing quite wide formation, sometimes it can really tire my midfield out. And with this being my prime kind set of players, I don't really want to get them too tired. So I, I kind of balance stamina and uh, urgency a little bit to kind of balance the player uh, but that's what we do when we're when we're out with the ball and in transition that's what we kind of do we counter press we counter when we get it and i want my 
keeper to kind of pass to these guys. Keeper's not the best technical, as you can imagine, at this level. There's no Edisons of um, this level at all, so I kind of want him to just play real simple, play it from the back, uh, and let the defenders uh, get the ball to the midfielders eventually. One thing I did change from the tactics, I actually got this tactic in chat. Um, it was by a guy called Tactician Keith. So Keith, if you're watching, thanks very much, pal. Um, originally, it was this, work in the box. But I found what happened um, with obviously my players being very lacking in the technical area. Uh, we often misplaced the pass or we didn't. the cross wasn't great or it was a little bit too late. And I just thought I'd, I'd much rather get the this option on. Um, the keepers in this level aren't great, so long shots often go in. Early crosses, do you mean that means my right back and left back don't have to be right up here and leave a huge gap at the back. Um, it allows them to kind of get the ball, either pass it back or whip it in. Um, so that was one thing I did change from the tactic. Uh, but apart from that, that was the, the tactic that I was given. Uh, the tactic that I changed to midway through the season uh, and the catalyst for the change in form. And speaking of form, uh, I'll show you that very shortly. But first, what we will show you is the transfers. So as you can see, as I mentioned, Franks did leave the club. He was our obviously highest earner, most valued player. Uh, however, I did obviously get the balance across the team rather than just have one standout guy. I uh, wanted a much more balanced team and it definitely, definitely helped. Uh, so we managed to uh, recoup 39k for him, which is a little bit low. We could have probably got more had we waited. However, any team that kind of wanted to pay the full value didn't want to pay him his wage demands. So it was kind of, I don't really want to wait and keep spending money on someone who I don't particularly need when I've changed his formation. So it was more of kind of, I'll take what I got. I got 39k. He went to an Icelandic team. He's played in Iceland before as well. Um, so he went back to them. And this allowed us to kind of uh, be a bit more expressive in the transfer market. Uh, and we picked up some real real good players. Max Haygarth was one of those. Ex-Man United youth. Um, played for Man United, as you can see there. And then played 30 games for me, scoring two goals, three assists, two player of the matches, and a 6.96 overall rating for the whole season. Um, probably a little bit lower than I'd expect because he was a really good player on the ball uh, and probably, to be honest, a little bit underrated. Um, but, but yeah, that's that. Uh, we also got Jason Kennedy in. Uh, he's a real local lad. He used to live in Roseworth. Don't know if he still potentially does. Um, but really local. Uh, he had a bit of a he's had a bit of a journeyman career. To be fair, um, has our Jason started off in Middlesbrough, went all over the place: Darlow, Rochdale, Bradford, Carlisle, Hartlepool, and then to us. Uh, playing twenty three for the season, two two goals, five assists, and two player of the matches. Quite similar. To Max in terms of uh, stats there. A little bit lower average rating. But again, uh, he definitely helped solidify that midfield 100%. Um, you've obviously already seen Banks. That was the game. The Javel Clark, who we mentioned, scored all the goals for us. Um, cracking player, to be fair. Pretty much stacked in all the stats you'd expect. Uh, he's a pacey yet tall striker who has decent finishing. A uh, little bit low on composure and first touch. But all the rest, double digits in off the ball, double digits in all the pacey areas, and good at dribbling, good at shooting. So we'll take that. Uh, oh, Aduka Chima. And before I click him, no, he's not Japanese. He's Italian. Very, very random name for an Italian. Um, he actually gets capped for the under-20s for Italy as well. So we actually have an Italian youth player playing at Stockton, which is just crazy to think. Uh, but this guy was an absolute rock at the back. Um, very pacey for this level as a defender. Six foot tall. Good positioning, good tackling, good heading. Good everything, really. The only thing that is a little bit lacking, really, is composure. He does sometimes make the odd little mistake here and there, uh, which can lead to conceding the odd stupid goal. But in general, I'd say 80 to 90% of the time, he's a cracking defender for us. And at 21 years old... We've got a real, uh, we've got a real gem in our hand. Potentially, we could, uh, if we can get him signed up properly with a real contract um, and keep hold of him, we might actually make some money off him. Uh, one for the future, I reckon as well. But there were the, uh, there were the main signings, hundred percent. Max, Jason, and Duke Chima. Uh, we did get uh, Clayton McDonald, uh, centre back. He's not with us no more. As you can see, a little 
highlight for Jose. He left the season after. Um, but we got got a few other guys who didn't really do anything crazy. Um, we also did get a, a lot of loans in again. I think there's something like eight or nine loans in. Um, no real big performances from any of these guys. These were kind of just to fill the squad um, just so we weren't kind of killing people with the stamina of this level. They often do get tired. Um, so these were more like squad fillers, to be honest. Um, and no, I didn't nickname this guy. He's actually called Lol Lol, um, which is just mental. Uh, and to be fair, after looking, I presume there wouldn't be many Lol Lols in the game. I thought it'd be really rare, but look at this. I don't know if it's just potentially the Steam database I used, but however, we have an absolute shit ton of lol lols. Um, so yeah, lols all around. Uh, so yeah, that's the um, that's the tactics and transfer short. Uh, let's move into the match schedule and see how we just did for the whole season. And here we are, guys. So match schedule wise, this one was very different to our first Invincible season. Uh, we got off to a cracking start in the friendlies. However, we soon hit reality. Uh, our first game in the season uh, was the FA Cup game. Knocked straight out with that. That was one cup out, gone. Uh, follow on from last season's fails. However, this time it was the team's fault and not mine. I did play a goalkeeper. I did play my first team, but we still lost. So that was that. Uh, in terms of the league performances, again, real poor start. First two games, two losses. One at home as well, which um, we kind of pride ourselves on our home uh, performances normally. But we lost that one. We lost our next game away um, to, I'm not even going to try and say that name. It could be to, uh, it won't be PG, let's say that. Uh, we then picked ourselves up a little bit and had a decent run of form, to be honest. However, it soon changed. And this is kind of the area that made me warrant the change in tactics. Um, this... This was an absolute killer. I, I was obviously I stream every game I play, and everyone in chat was like, "What has happened?" We, we went at, at this point. I think we were twelve points behind, uh, top of the table, twelve points behind. I thought the season was over. Um, so this match here was the first game I played uh, with the new formation uh, after the sale of Jonathan Franks and a couple of those new guys coming in. That was the first game. Uh, and to be fair, obviously, without doing any training or anything like that in the formation, I thought a, a draw was decent. Um, we did then get beat, but we stuck by it uh, and soon changed the season round. Compared to, let me show you the first half of the season. If you would look at that, you'd go, okay, you're probably a top half finish. Maybe he's a mid-table, a top half, you'd say. Uh, but then if you flick around to the second half, if you ignore that and just look there... You would 100% say you were going to be somewhere near the top. Um, which nicely leads me on to showing you the table. And this is how the table finished, guys. As you can see, the mighty Stockton Anchors sitting at the top once again. Two seasons, two titles. What more could you want? After that rocky road start, we managed to massively pull it back. Um, winning 22 out of 38. Losing 10 games, drawing 6, um, which was crazy. After the, after those, I think it was 6 losses in six losses in 10, I think it was, we only lost 4 of the games for the rest of the season. Um, so we, we massively, massively pulled it back. Uh, shout out again to Keith for that formation change. It was, it was incredible, the impact it had on the team. Uh, but for the overall... How it went, we finished six points clear of second, which was Colne, or Colne, however you say that one. Uh, we had the best goals, goal amount scored in the uh, in the league by some distance as well, 13 more uh, than second in the table. Um, we did concede a few more. If you actually look, we actually had quite a, a bad defensive record, really. But hey-ho, um, we scored more than we were like a Man City. We might concede a few, but we'll outscore you. Um, and yes, I did cons I did just compare Stockton to Man City, if only, eh? Um, but yeah, that is how the season ended up. I, I don't know what else I can really tell you, to be honest. We we started poorly and smashed it in the end. That is how uh, we're going to end 
on that note, if you did enjoy what I'm what I'm doing, feel free to watch it live on Twitch. Like I say, I do stream on Tuesdays, Thursdays, Saturdays, and Sundays, usually from half three till half seven. So if you do want to watch it live, head over to Twitch. And if you are enjoying it on YouTube, feel free to drop a drop a sub, drop a comment, drop a like on the uh, on the video. Lovely guys, we'll see you in the next one. Bye bye. <laughs>